And now Annie Lori Gaylor, co-president of the Freedom from Religion Foundation, who was at the very first convention back in 77, whenever it was, it was way back then, when she was two years old. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, I was an original founder of the regional group back in 1976 with my mother, Ann Nicole Gaylor. And Dan pointed out that the point in our uh, history where we had the greatest, what was it? Um, the percentage growth. For the, the greatest percentage growth of FFRF was when we had a third person join us. <laughs> John Sontark, who lived only for a year. He was in Milwaukee, but he lent his name so it wouldn't just look like a mother-daughter team. <laughs> And um, the rest is history. The group actually went national in 1978. In April, we were incorporated with our two purposes, which are to defend the constitutional separation of church and state and to educate the public about non-theism. So we started off with two or three of us, and we have grown to the largest free thought association in America. 39th, uh, almost. almost. Almost 30,000. If every one of you could recruit somebody, we'd be 30,000. <laughs> and so I wanted to explain that the 40th annual convention is early because we had a national convention before we were incorporated nationally in 1977. So this is kicking off a 40th anniversary year festivities through next year. So we're very happy you're here. Um, and I do, on behalf of the staff here, the Freedom from Religion Foundation's executive board, uh, welcome you for coming. And it's a great deal of travel and money and expense, and we really appreciate it. And uh, tomorrow is Constitution Day. So we're having our 40th annual convention on the weekend of the 230th anniversary of our godless and secular constitution, the first... The first constitution in history that did not claim a pipeline from a divinity, has no God in it, invested sovereignty in we, the people. And uh, it also has no religious test for public office. And at our office, we believe that includes no religious test for citizenship or for visiting our country or for immigration. And we're very proud that yesterday, <clears throat> We filed an amicus brief before the U.S. Supreme Court arguing that the um, ban of certain Muslim nations from traveling here is an unconstitutional religious test and in a violation of our establishment clause. And if uh, one religion minority can be uh, banned, then it can be atheist next. Um, And we have over 730 registrants, and tomorrow morning, Lisa Strand, our Director of Operation, is going to give you the lowdown on which states, provinces, and, and countries are registered. Um, and I do want a round of applause for Lisa Strand, who did most of the, all of, really, the organization of this. Yay, Lisa. She's walking back there. Lisa, wave. <laughs> And I also want to especially thank Jackie Douglas, who's always in the front there, our membership manager, Christina Leiden, who's done, uh, just been hired and done an, an enormous amount of work, Lisa Troy, and all of our staff who are there helping you at the sales tables. And their names are in the convention brochure. There are over 25, so I won't read them all. So the Freedom from Religion Foundation is now larger than it's ever been. Uh, Annie Laurie told you we're close to 30,000 in the last... 30 years, you can see our growth uh, starting when I started taking records back in 1987. And look at that spike in that last year. <laughs> and So there was a sudden burst of new members after November 9th. <laughs> and there's got to be a better way to grow an organization. I got So we have a little teaser. Uh, Bruce Johnson put this together. Just a quick teaser of some of the many letters that our attorneys have been sending around the country. In this war memorial, the subject of this letter 
from the Freedom From Religion Foundation. In a letter to District Council Doug Thorne, the foundation said, quote, public school graduations must be secular to protect the freedom of conscience of all students. The FFRF wrote a letter to Neosho Mayor Charles Collinsworth asking him to remove the cross or move it to a more private location. He was shocked to receive a letter from the Freedom From Religion Foundation, but not necessarily due to the organization's threat of legal action. The Wisconsin-based Freedom From Religion Foundation took issue with Coach Hens's leading the pregame prayer. The Freedom From Religion Foundation has sent a letter to the Moss Point School District to express church and state separation concerns. The foundation says the cross is an unconstitutional endorsement of religion. Freedom From Religion Foundation attorney Patrick Elliott says his foundation also has a legal case in California right now dealing with this very issue. The Wisconsin-based group sent a letter to Longwood saying it's a government endorsement of Christianity and a blatant violation of the separation of church and state. The Freedom From Religion Foundation sent this letter threatening a potential half-million-dollar lawsuit. The Wisconsin-based Freedom From Religion Foundation got a complaint and sent this letter down to the town asking for the trip to be canceled, telling the town government should not hold events that benefit religious organizations. So that's a small sample um, of TV coverage. And this is a teaser for a very in-depth legal report that you're going to be hearing from five of our staff attorneys tomorrow. And since the last convention, we've won five lawsuits, including removing this angel display in Shelton, Connecticut. Jerry Bloom will be telling you more about that tomorrow as a free thinker of the year. This is before and after pictures of a city park in Santa Clara, California, after our lawsuit was victoriously settled in March. And then here's another before and after. This is the Ten Commandments monument that was at the high school in New Kensington, Pennsylvania. There it is. And now look. And Marie Schaub will also be named Freethinker of the Year, and you'll be hearing from her tomorrow. Pensacola, Florida. We had a victory there. In June, a federal decision in our favor, though the city has appealed our victory. And look at the size of that. That's 30-foot tall cross. <laughs> uh, Mercer County, West Virginia. We have a lot of ongoing cases. We have 13 ongoing cases, and there was a lot of national publicity. In this case, which is about religious instruction in the public schools, including um, uh, fundamentalist instruction and asking students to imagine if you were Adam and Eve, how fun it would be to slide down the back of a dinosaur. <laughs> it really egregious. And so um, National CBS did a CBS This Morning segment, and we are going to show you an excerpt of that. Some parents in West Virginia are fighting to put an end to Bible class in public schools. For nearly 80 years, Bible stories have been taught in Mercer County as part of the regular school week. A new lawsuit argues the course is unconstitutional. Mercer County's Bible course is decades old and extremely popular in that community. But in the lawsuit, however, a major lobby for the separation of church and state is arguing that popular is not the same as legal. It's very important that what we teach at home could be moved on to the school and instilled there and moved to the church and instilled there so that it goes in a circle. The school portion of that circle is provided by a program called Bible in the Schools. Is it a religious course? It's the Bible. Is that a yes? It's the Bible and it is God. We love Bible class! The enrollment rate among the county's 19 elementary schools is 96 percent. Do all the kids in your class go to Bible class too? Only one goes out and plays on a computer because she can't, she can't hear what the Bible says. How come? Because her dad just doesn't want her to hear all the Bible stuff. What do you think about that? I think that that's bad. She needs to go to Bible class. Comments like these are part of what attracted the Freedom From Religion Foundation, a Wisconsin-based lobby for the separation of church and state. In a lawsuit filed jointly last month with Jane Doe, a mother of a Mercer County kindergartner who wishes to remain anonymous, the group accused the county of running Bible indoctrination classes. 
that endorse the literal truth of the Bible. If you want them to have a religious education, that burdens on you. That burden should not be on the school system. Elizabeth Deal, like Jane Doe, believes the Mercer County program violates the rights of parents who wish to keep public school a secular place. She moved her daughter Sophie out of the school system after she was bullied for opting out. They taunted her about it. They told her that she was going to hell, that I was going to hell, that her father was going to hell. How would you feel if Bible class went away? I would feel kind of angry and sad. Now, the lawyer representing the school board says it's open to changes to the curriculum if needed to keep the program going. But in this lawsuit, the Freedom From Religion Foundation is not asking for changes. It wants the program to go. And now the school board has just a few weeks to respond and effectively save or lose its program. Wow. Well, let us know how that turns out. So we will let you know how that turns out. The Bible classes have since been suspended, but we will not be dropping that case until we get assurances in writing that it will never come back. And now down in Texas, we filed a lawsuit in March against this judge who allows courtroom prayer. And used to lead them. In May, we sued Trump over his executive order saying that churches can engage in politicking. And this is the um, full page ad that ran in the New York Times. And last month, the Department of Justice admitted that Trump's executive order did not have the authority to repeal a law like the Johnson Amendment. And so we consider our ongoing litigation to have been successful so far. So FFRF actions have generated well over a thousand print stories this year, and there are a lot of also TV stories. Here are excerpts from two national interviews on Fox TV on legal Dan complaints Barker, from this year. Dan Barker, the co-president of the Freedom From Religion Foundation, and he joins us tonight. So you shut down a club for first graders studying the Bible. Do you feel, you feel good about that? Yes, we do. In fact, we didn't shut it down after getting the letter that we sent the school itself looked at the legal precedent and looked at the reasoning and they decided to stop the illegal Bible club being led by teachers in the public schools. So there is no threat of a lawsuit here. The school did the right thing. Well, you, bully, you bullied them into it, um, bullied in, into them canceling a club for first graders. Um, but what's the constitutional problem with this? School district employees have a right to express their views. Well, Tucker, you know there's a difference between free speech in government speech, when those teachers are at the school, they are the government. And the children who go to that school, they look up to, they're told to respect those teachers. And, and, the, and the students do. But there are families who wish to protect their children from the, the depravity and the violence that's in the Bible. And they don't think the school should be taking sides on such a personal religious issue. And in but, fact, but the, the Supreme school, Court has already addressed this issue. So the cheering stops. And now here's uh, our attorney, Andrew Seidel on Fox. Andrew, I will start with you. The name of your foundation is Freedom From Religion. However, when you read the First Amendment, it talks about freedom of religion. Why would these leaders not have the ability in a country with a lot of faith-filled people to simply host a Bible study? Well, look, there, there are two major concerns here, right? There's the legality and the propriety of this. So first, these are government officials on government property using government resources on the taxpayer time getting together for a religious purpose. And that raises several issues. You know, what is the extent of the government resources being used? Are staffers pressured or coerced into attending? And you the Freedom do you from believe Religion that Foundation these cabinet members are being... submitted a number of... Do you believe they're being coerced? No, I'm saying that I this mean, is something we don't. I'm saying that this is something we don't know, and we've actually submitted records requests to attempt to determine the extent of any possible violations. But if you leave the, the legalities aside, the propriety here, it, I mean, it can't be considered proper or in keeping with American values for government officials to get together on taxpayer time to study a book that condones slavery and the yeah. subjugation of women and the eternal torture and torment of people who don't believe like you. So well, even if it doesn't violate the Constitution directly, it certainly violates that core principle of American government, the so, separation of state and Dr. church. We also started our Educate Congress campaign. We had envisioned this a couple years ago, and boy, do they need it now. Um, 
so FFRF attorneys have made two forays this year, and we expect another one uh, this fall. And then here's seven of the legal interns from this summer. And the attorneys love the interns because they dump all the work on the interns. And, <laughs> but they did wonderful research and wonderful work and uh, really, really a, a nice team this summer. Well, we had, <laughs> we had women and, and um, non-white students apply, but nobody accepted. And we don't know why. I mean, this group was started by two women, so there's no sexism going on, but we'll try to keep spreading the word. This, we've had plenty of women attorneys who are interns. Now, other FFRF actions during the year. Here's Andrew again with an ad, a Facebook ad, about the Ark Park. If the religious right remains unchecked, science-based education will be history. This will be the classroom of the future, Ken Ham's Ark Park in northern Kentucky. Built with millions in taxpayer subsidies on land that the government basically gave to Ham. Thousands of people have already visited this park, which lets in public school children for one dollar. All to learn that dinosaurs boarded a fantasy boat along with horses and cows. Freedom From Religion Foundation has worked to ensure that no public school will bring its students to this park, which refuses to hire LGBTQ or non-Christians. But that's just the beginning. The religious right is working to ensure that any mention of facts like evolution and climate change are kept out of our public school classrooms and textbooks. They want to funnel millions of our school children and billions of our taxpayer dollars into private Christian schools. The Freedom From Religion Foundation is fighting these dangerous abuses of power. Become a member of the Freedom From Religion Foundation today to protect science-based education and keep religion out of our public schools. And I don't know if, is, is, is Alec, is Alec Loftus who wrote that and produced that, is he in the room? He'll be wandering around through the convention, you'll get to meet him. Um, this is a, one of our, our ads. Does this, does this move? No, it was a doesn't. moving billboard ad in Times Square. The only wall we need and that it goes is church and state. And then student activists. Here are four of the student activists. You, uh, We've named so far this year. And you uh, heard from Kelly uh, uh, earlier today. So, Also students of color essay winners. This is our new David Hudak Memorial um, essay competition dedicated to students of color. They're all open to everybody except for this one. Is, um, and these are our top six winners. We had um, 14. 14 overall winners and gave over $10,050. And you've read their wonderful essays in Free Thought today. And here's the top six high school out of 17 high school winners, uh, $10,150 were given to those, and you saw their essays. And college essay, over $11,000 to 18 winners, and we're gonna announce the grad student winners after the convention. Here's Andrew again at the state capitol, soliciting questions for our Ask an Atheist TV show. He went to the capitol and we got some of those videotaped. And I'm with uh, Bruce. And with Bruce Johnson mm -hmm. and, and uh, Chris Lyon was there. So we hope you're watching our Wednesday at noon central Ask an Atheist Facebook Live where we take questions from people. And, and from you, you might know the answers, but you can feel free to plant some questions on Facebook. <laughs> and then uh, this is the studio. We have the brand new studio, the Stephen Yule Friendly Atheist Studio, where we are in the process of producing a TV show that will be broadcast, that's the goal anyway, uh, called Free Thought Matters. So we were, you, we were doing that today with people like Cara Santa Maria. So look for that next year. Then a really exciting thing this summer was the Darrow statue, and you'll hear from Zenith tomorrow. Here's something that uh, Bruce produced for us, narrated by Liz Cavell. In 1925, Dayton, Tennessee was a sleepy little southern town with a religious reputation. At the time, it was illegal in Tennessee to teach the theory of evolution in schools. Several city leaders decided to make Dayton the test case for this law, recruiting high school science teacher John Scopes as the defendant. The case attracted national attention. The famous lawyer, fervent Christian and former presidential candidate William Jennings Bryan, volunteered to help in the prosecution. 
while the American Civil Liberties Union recruited populist firebrand Clarence Darrow to act in Scopes' defense. Held in the oppressively hot summer of 1925, the trial took on a circus atmosphere, and it brought Dayton the business and media attention it so craved. While the case was decided in favor of the prosecution, it was later overturned on a technicality. William Jennings Bryan died five days after the conclusion of the trial. In 1930, a group of Christian leaders established Bryan College in Dayton in his honor, and in 2005, a statue of Bryan was erected on the lawn of the Ray County Courthouse where the trial had taken place. The omission of a Clarence Darrow statue was finally remedied in 2017. The Freedom From Religion Foundation commissioned noted sculptor Zenos Fridakis to create a bronze likeness of Darrow, which was dedicated in a ceremony on July 14th. FFRF co-president Annie Laurie Gaylor addressed the assembled crowd. We are here, of course, to celebrate the unveiling of the missing link at the Ray County Courthouse. FFRF co-president Dan Barker quoted Clarence Darrow. An idea is a greater monument than a cathedral. Clarence Darrow, William Jennings Bryan, bravo. University of Idaho Dean Andrew Kirsten is a Darrow biographer, and he pointed out that for all their differences, Darrow and Bryan were still friends. Darrow and Bryan at various moments were in and out of touch with American politics for most of their lives. Yet neither of them ever abandoned their basic agreement that our system of governance should work for everyone, not simply those who have more than others. Actor John DeLancey portrayed Clarence Darrow for three years in a traveling stage play. He minced no words in defining the importance of the Scopes trial and the Ray County Courthouse. But in the world of the religious versus the secular, this is ground zero, the epicenter. And now that Darrow has taken up his rightful place along with Brian, the debate can be heard by all. Sculptor Zenos Fridakis had the last word before the unveiling. Oh, I hope that you like it. And I think it's, I think it's a, um, a nice companion piece. Um, and if it helps with create a discussion and, and to, uh, conversation, I think that's great. While the drape hit some snags while being removed, once it came off, the assembled crowd all cheered the likeness of the great lawyer, Clarence Darrow, who will share the lawn of the Ray County Courthouse with William Jennings Bryan for decades to come. <laughs> nice piece by Bruce. So, um, that, um, Bruce Johnson, who is a new hire, is producing something called a news bite or an a, a inside look at FFRF every week. And we uh, send that out to you in the weekly wrap that our communications director, Amit Paul, the wonderful um, wrap-up of the week that we send out to all of you for whom we have emails. And so if you are not clicking that link to look at the news bite, you're missing a lot of good video. And I wanted to also say that um, John DeLancey has agreed to get an Emperor Has No Clothes Award at our 2018 National Convention in San Francisco the weekend of November 2nd through 4th. So mark, mark that on your calendar. And this is a photo of John DeLancey and me taking the uh, cover off of the statue that was taken by the Associated Press and this photo ran in the New York Times. They ran a story about this. So. Just more photos? Going. The conservative news site American Spectator called FFRF professional pains in the ass since 1978. <laughs> so we decided to embrace that with this staff photo. And we've had people say, is this photoshopped? Of course, that's the first and only so far, atheist marquee in the world, and it's not photoshopped. We took it as a compliment, and here's, here's the staff, a close-up of the staff on that day. And then in, in London, England, in July, we had the privilege of participating in a secular conference on freedom of conscience and expression, and Maryam Namazi was the main organizer there. And it was the largest conference of ex-Muslims in history, almost all atheists, so you'll learn more about that. 
Um, our latest PR coup, um, and this is thanks to Amit Paul, um, we co-sponsored part of a day of the Religion News Service National Conference in Nashville. And that's, uh, we had a legal panel, that's Rebecca Market and Andrew Seidel conducted the legal workshop, and then uh, Dan addressed the lunch, and Amit Paul represented us. Um, he was able to say a few words along with Pat Boone, what was, um, Pat Boone? Yeah. <laughs> he was up there with Pat Boone. And um, um, so that was making a lot of good friends of the religion, news writers, and opinion makers around the United States. And then our Ron Reagan ad is still our highest successful ad that we've ever run. We're going to continue to run it. Look for this ad of, uh, with Ron Reagan, son of the f former president. It will be airing 14 times in the next three weeks on the Rachel Maddow show. You want to say that? Yeah. yeah. And that's only possible thanks to your kind donations to our advertising fund. So thank you. And we'd like to end by playing it. Hi, I'm Ron Reagan, an unabashed atheist, and I'm alarmed by the intrusions of religion into our secular government. That's why I'm asking you to support the Freedom From Religion Foundation, the nation's largest and most effective association of atheists and agnostics, working to keep state and church separate, just like our founding fathers intended. Please support the Freedom From Religion Foundation. Ron Reagan, lifelong atheist, not afraid of burning in hell. And you, you know that's so popular, so we now have that saying on t-shirts and a, a, a pin that you can buy over there. And we'll be uh, releasing a new virtual billboard app uh, by the end of the month where your face can be there um, with the little devil horns, unabashed, whatever you want to call yourself, atheist agnostic with your name on it. So look for that. <laughs>